Hello guys, this is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. Today we're going to create a to-do app making uh, just out of pure vanilla JavaScript. Uh, there's going to be no Node.js, no special libraries, nothing like that. It's going to be very inefficient code, but uh, I'm just doing this to show that you can make stuff like this very simply out of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, this is what our app is going to look like when we finish. Um, that is with the style sheet. I'm not going to go into the style sheet that I created here. Um, you can create your own or you don't necessarily even have to use one. Um, or you can just go to our GitHub and get my style sheet and use it for your own application. It's up to you. Okay. So let's start by making our HTML. So <clears throat> I just used Emmet to create our snippet very simply. And some of the HTML elements I'm going to put in here you don't necessarily have to use. The only things you really need are the H1 here, the input, and the two buttons. And that's it. And of course the unordered list. So in this case we're going to change the title to to do app. And then we're going to add a div wrapper and then a div dot border. These are for me, they're just styling features for you. They might not do anything. So it's up to you if you want to add them inside of those. I'm going to put an H1 that just says to do app. And then next to the to do app, I'm going to put an input of type button or of type text rather of ID text with a placeholder and in this case our placeholder will just be add stuff with a few dots after it so it'll look like this you know add stuff okay so now we need to make our add button so button with type of add and inside of it is going to be add of course and then we're going to have a remove all button. So button with remove all, and that's going to be in camel case. And then inside it's going to say remove all. Okay. And then underneath all of this, we're going to make our unordered list and that's going to be called list. So unordered list, uh, <clears throat> ID of list. Okay. And there's going to be nothing inside of that. That's all going to be manipulated by the JavaScript itself. So let's take a look at what this looks like inside of our, um, what we just built looks like. So this is without the CSS. This is what it'll look like. It's nothing special, but it'll get the job done. Uh, let me link the CSS here. So, okay. CSS linked in. Everything looks a little bit better, I guess. <laughs> it's really up to you if you want to do that. And for JavaScript, let's link our JavaScript in. So source equals app.js. So whatever you name your JavaScript app or your JavaScript file, you're going to link it in with the script. And you can also do type equals text slash JavaScript. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I like to do that for consistency sake. Okay. So now that we've defined what our HTML is look like, we need to actually start to work on the JavaScript itself. So we need to think about what exactly does an, a to-do app do. What a to-do app does is that you enter text into the input box, okay? And when you hit the add button, the input box clears and the text gets moved to below the input box into the unordered list. So basically by hitting the add button, you're creating a bunch of elements inside of the unordered list and they just keep going down the page. We also want to have buttons in each element that allow us to uh, remove the elements if we want to. So just a little button that we click and it removes an element, you know, one by one instead of removing them all at once with this big button up here. So we will have the remove all button and then we will also have little buttons that we can click to remove the singular to do's. Okay. So let's get started. So 
First, we need to define a few variables, which basically, it just means we need to bind a few of the HTML elements to these variables. So for example, I'm defining the unordered list to a variable called UL. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to uh, bind both the buttons to different um, variables here. So remove all is going to be our remove all button. And I'm using the get element by ID function here. Since I define the IDs of each of our elements uh, by very simple names, remove all and add and list, we can simply do something like that. So in this case, it's just going to be add. So there we go. We've got our three elements in here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add an on click event to the add button. So add.onClick is going to equal an anonymous function. So function parentheses. And then inside of it, we're going to have a function called addLI, which is what we're going to use to add the list elements to the unordered list. And this function is going to get UL as its argument passed through it. Okay. So now we're going to make that function right now, the add li, li function. This function is going to deploy every time you click the add button. Okay. So function add li. <clears throat> and let's say target ul. UI is getting passed into here. And okay, so let's start. We need to make a few variable declarations here. So variable input text equals document dot get element by ID and we're going to get the text the input text so text we're going to get the actual value so it's going to be dot value as you can see you can string together these functions that way so this is just taking the value inside of here uh, and nothing else so it's not taking any of the other parts of the HTML okay because I'm defining multiple variables, I'm using a comma. So next, we need to define the actual li that we're going to create. So documents dot create element, and we're going to make a li element. So li equals document dot create element li. Okay. Now, because we're making a node, we're going to define a text node that's going to be attached to the li element. So document dot create text node and we're going to call it or we're going to put input text inside of it so the input text from here and then we're going to put a space just for consistency sake so we're going to concatenate a space onto it so that it has space between it and the done button that we're going to create so now we need to make that done button so remove button equals document dot create elements and let's say button because that's what we're making we're making a button element okay so the next thing we need to do is pretty simple we need to make sure that this box clears when we hit the add button okay so to do that it's very simple document dot get element by id so we get the element itself which is text and then we just change the value to an empty string. And that'll clear the box. All right. So now we want to basically force the user to actually put something in the box so that if they hit the add button, it won't just add an empty string to, you know, the list because that would be annoying as hell. So if input box or input text rather, um, dot length triple equals zero and see this actually won't work if we just set it equal to zero you can have a negative string in there and that could cause some problems but for now it should be fine so alert there is no input in the box. 
Okay, so a box will pop up and it'll say there's nothing in there. You know, please do whatever. And you can put whatever you want into that box. <clears throat> and it's going to return false from the function. So it's going to break out of the function, return false to the environment, and that's it. Okay. So now we want to deal with the actual uh, done button so, and how that works. So remove button. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the HTML element inside of the JavaScript. So we're going to give it a class name because my style has class name on it. And it's called remove me. So very simply, the class name of the element is going to be remove me. Uh, it's going to have inner HTML, so it's going to have a name. So inner HTML is going to equal done. Capital letters done. Let's put a space there just in case we need one. All right. Next, oh, whoops. Next, we're going to give it an on click attribute. So remove button dot set attribute. And to do this, we give it an on click attribute and we pass remove me this. This means uh, the actual element itself is being passed to itself. And there we go. So now this won't actually work yet because we haven't defined the remove me function, but um, everything else should be fine. So Actually, if I save this and I reload this and I type something in, it'll actually start to remove the text, but it won't display it yet because we haven't created that functionality yet. Um, also, the remove button won't work. And this, so here's the alert box that we created. So if it's empty, it just pops up and says there's no input in the box. Okay. So now let's create the functionality uh, that will actually add the text below the, you know, into the unordered list. So li.append child. And we're going to append the text node to it first. Then we're going to append the, uh, the button itself to it. The reason we're doing the text node first is because we want the text first and the button next. So, okay, you can you can do them in either order if you want, but this looks more aesthetically pleasing uh, with the styling that I'm using. So, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to append all of that onto the target UI. So the target unordered list is going to get all of that. So, append child and we're just going to append li to it, which is the text inside of it. Okay, if we save that, we start putting stuff in here. What, what, let me reload it. There we go. See, it starts giving us cool stuff. And our remove button still doesn't work. Our done buttons do not work, but we can add stuff, and that's cool. You know, it's functionality that we didn't have before. So now we need to make a remove me function, and then we need to add an on click function to the remove all button. So first let's do the remove me function. So function remove me. It's pretty simple. Inside will be an item var parent equals item dot parent element. And then we can go parent dot parent elements dot remove child and then parent so basically what this is doing is we're getting the entire list itself and then we're or we're actually just getting the li itself and then we're removing it from the list okay so now if i reload this if i save and reload this i can now remove stuff very simply from the list. <clears throat> Still, our remove all button doesn't work. So let's do that now. Remove all on click. So like our um, add on click, it's remove all on click equals an anonymous function. 
and this is very simple it's just the UIL variable is just going to become uh, the inner HTML of it is just going to be empty and that just clears the entire UL so if I save that and I start typing stuff out like Emacs and I don't know JavaScript and I hit remove all it all goes away so that's it this is a very simple vanilla to do app I've got a github repository for it if you want to check it out um, there are various ways you could have written this if you wanted to um, various different things you can change about it uh, I hope this just gives you a little insight into you know the development of JavaScript through the document object model and uh, you know just vanilla JavaScript <laughs> I mean this stuff is it's not very difficult uh, it may seem so some parts of it may seem a little abstract at first but it's very easy to get used to anyway guys that's about all of it so I hope you all have a good day